Welcome to the 89 Garage. I am your host, Shane, and today we have a 2006 Escape valve cover gasket job we're gonna do, and also put spark plugs in it. Um, it's running around the corner, it gave me a little hassle starting up, I had to jump it to start it. It's been sitting for a really long time actually. Uh, actually, probably since, March of last year it's been sitting um, but uh, if you've tuned into my previous episodes episode one I believe I mentioned that that is going to be my daughter's car she is going to be 16 soon and we're trying to make it work out for her if it doesn't we'll shove her on down the road and be done with it but uh, I do know for sure it has a pretty pretty heinous uh, leak that is constantly leaking down on the valve cover gas on the from the valve cover gasket to the the exhaust manifold. It looks like a header. I I called it a header in a video that I may piece in here, just showing you um, how heinous of a leak it is. You you can actually see uh, drops hitting the manifold. So anyway. We're going to do that, and I, I hope you enjoy. I hope this is something you can use uh, on your escape. Uh, this is going to be pretty similar for the two. This is a 2.3 we're working on, but it will be very similar for a 2.0 and a 2.5. It's also very similar for other vehicles like uh, the Focus, I know, also is pretty similar, if not identical. Um, anyway, let's get on with it. When I do gaskets, 90% of the time, maybe even higher than 90, I go with Felpro. They just they just work. If you look here, this works on the 2.5, 2.3, and 2.0. I apologize if this lighting isn't the best. It's all I've got right now. We are going to start out with the famous 10 millimeter socket. A lot of what we're doing today is going to be using a 10. Work smarter, not harder. This throttle cable is right in the road. Boy, howdy, that's handy. That's loose. These here just have little spring clip on the bottom. You just kind of move get on there. Move it over and pull it straight. Pops right off. Let me I'm gonna remove this one here just so I can show you. That right there, you just kind of move that over and you can pull these straight off. Pretty easy. I'm gonna move that out of the way. This one here is also a tin. Gotta put it in the right gear sometimes, you know. Looks like we're also gonna be dealing with some eight millimeter action here. for the fuel pressure. This here I believe is a K 
cam sensor. If you don't have one of these little magnetic trays, boy howdy are they, are they ever handy in a situation like this. So, we're just going to be removing a lot of fasteners. You know what, sometimes a guy he just doesn't want to fight it. Things are going real nice right now. I don't feel like messing around with that boy. Too sure why that there it goes. Right to factory spec. This here you just pop it straight up. And um, this this is the injector harness you don't have to mess with that I just like to get this, this fuel actually and this here I think could stay plugged in but just to get it out of my way I'll get it out okay the next thing I'm gonna tackle I'm gonna get rid of these COPs which stands for coil unplug if you don't know that and what that means Older cars use one coil for every spark plug. Uh, these newer cars, they went to a COP, like I said, um, means coil on plug. Each cylinder has its own coil. Sometimes, uh, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad, depends on what angle you take. Right here, I do not remember what this sensor is, but there's a plug right in the middle of this. Um, you just push right there. This thing will, that's pops out real easy. I don't remember what that sensor is. Just move that sucker off the side. Put that right there for now. Switch back to the tin. This here is a hose, which I believe is power steering. Yes, it is. Just take this here, throw it right on the side. Okay. Flip this around, move that over to the side. These here, there's two of these. Uh, this is a bracket that I would like to modify at some point. I really don't care for the way this was ran. This here goes to the degas bottle. Slash overflow, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Moving along, we are now in the um, These do not need to, you don't need to remember where these go, they're all interchangeable. Now, you want to inspect these. 
I don't know if you saw my video where I said I suspected that we had uh, a leaky one that was leaking. My suspicion confirmed. That is bad. You don't want that to happen. I may hit up Napa. I might have I might have a boot for this already. Generally, when this happens, your boot starts to crack and get bad on you and swell up. Um, I'm gonna. gonna I don't know what I'll wind up doing here. I might have done already. That one could be, could have bled from the other cylinder. It does have oil in it too. This also does. That one does not. So, let's see where we're at. Let's get these off to the side here. When I first started this a couple days ago, it was uh, pretty sluggish, uh, and, and it had a little bit of a mist to it. That's why, why I had my suspicions. Give me some. Boy, I'll tell you what. If you don't have have these around the shop, garage, whatever you're doing, these are right handy. I believe they're made by Scott. They, they are my favorite uh, favorite to wipe up my messes. Okay, now we're switching back to the 8mm. I'm just going to pop these out. I, I, if I remember right, those things are built from out of there. I think there's a lock or something on them. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. That one is not even tight. have to edit that out you know that one ooh I got pop there's a harness there's a harness on this one that looks like it needs to come out um, I think there's two more on this end that gotta come out maybe three let's let's get in here and see you can always look at the gasket and see if you if you've missed one That one does come out. Might be one more right down the corner. Yes, there is. It's hidden by a harness also. That might have to use a ratchet. I really I also really like this. It's a it's made by Tekton, I think that's how you say it. Flex ratchet. I believe that they also make the flex ratchets for Husky and what is Low what's Lowe's brand? Cobalt. Yeah, I believe they also make the Cobalt unit. Really, really decent little ratchet. My bad. Kind of slid off on me. I what I really like about Tecton, and I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know if it's got some kind of a fancy pronunciation that I'm not aware of. But the thing that I that I love, I had I had a couple of sockets, 3 8 drive impact sockets that rounded out on me uh, it was an eight millimeter and a five sixteenths I used them uh, in my basement to sink uh, I screw in the the 
the two by fours, the base two by fours. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on the name of those right now, but I used them for those, and it wound up stripping them out. You know, as the as the screw went, you know, drove into the concrete, uh, the head disappeared and it sunk in, and that consequently made them round out. I sent a uh, tech on a picture. I didn't even talk to anybody. I sent him a picture. I got an email back saying, we just want to confirm these are 3 8 drive. And I said, yes, they are. And they were at my house two days later. Very awesome warranty. Um, they didn't even ask for the old tool, the old sockets back. Uh, very, I very much like their customer service. Looks like I missed one bolt here. I'm gonna go back to the door. And I'll tell you, if you don't have one of these, they are an absolute lifesaver in disassembly, especially. Looks like we're good to come off. Maybe a couple threads here and there. turned over. We got a total of four gaskets here. You got the large one that goes all the way around and then you've got three in the middle for the um, this is cylinder one, two, three, and four and that's like I say I don't remember what that sensor is. Maybe a knock sensor where it's at. It could very well be a knock sensor and it also may be a cylinder head temperature sensor. I'm not I'm not 100% sure where that is, it could be either one, really. Let me get you in here a little bit better. Let's see. This is what we're looking at here. If you look right there, down in there, there's a spark plug in there. Um, down in there. We've got oil in that one as well. That one is clean. Cylinder 4 is clean. So I'm going to try... You want... When you take this plug out, you want to get that oil out of there. You don't want to... You don't want to lose that down in there. We're going to try and get that out of there. See what we can do. Freshen that up. I don't know. I got a turkey baster or something I can pull that out with, I guess. Um, you really also at the same time while you're in here, you got two, your two cams in here. Um, this one's for exhaust. This one's intake. Just want to have a look at them. And honestly, for 200 and whatever thousand miles I don't know 217 218 I think I said it had 230 in the other video and I was, I was a little bit off but for how many miles this thing has on it it was actually look pretty dang good Ford did a really good job with this motor very impressed with it you can you can see though that this thing's its main leak down onto the manifold um, was down here. Let's see if I'll get in there better. Down there, you can kind of see where it's been leaking. It was leaking out of right here. You could you could actually see it leaking right there. And also right here. Alright back. So I'm gonna clean up this valve cover with uh little concoction I like to use little dawn little simple green 
some water. Now I'm telling you right now, folks, if you don't have yourself one of these buckets laying around that you can clean parts in, you're missing out. Absolutely necessary when you're working on things like this. I'm just gonna throw her in. Oh man, I hate that when that happens. Throw her in. That's not as big as I'd like it to be. The bucket isn't. Just throw a little of that. Instead of spraying this, I'm gonna open this puppy right up and give her hell. Right down the middle, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna drag her over here. The rest is water. Okay, we got her filling up with water now. One thing I should mention, I did take the cam sensor out so it's not getting wet. Uh, pretty much the rest of this, it needs to get cleaned up. So I'm just gonna leave it. One nice thing about using the Simple Green in the Dawn is it is environmentally safe. So you don't have to worry about uh, you know, dumping out chemicals that are not good. But we're gonna let her kind of soak for a little while. Come back maybe with a brush and get her nice and cleaned up. I'm gonna let it soak while I clean up the head. So this uses a rubber gasket. So it's fairly easy to clean this up. One thing you want to be aware of is not dropping, you know, if any of this paper towel rips on you, it can, because there's lots of little sharp points and what have you in here. If you happen to drop a piece of that down in here, you want to retrieve that because you don't want that to, see, I just did it right there, little piece, get that out of there. Alright, for the final cleanup, I like to use a microfiber towel, spray the carb cleaner directly on there. I'm going to go ahead and do these plugs at this point because now unfortunately all that oil goes down on top of the cylinder. I got out of, of quite a bit of it so it's not a not going to be enough that it's going to cause any damage, but that oil will make it probably smoke when I start it. Get in there, kind of clean that up a little bit.
Man, oh man. I might, I might be needing some Funyuns here in a minute. Jeez. That stuff is lit up, man. Woo-wee. If you haven't caught my video on Toyota Yaris spark plug replacement, I'm going to show you a little trick I use. So when, when you're installing spark plugs in a head, where it's uh, deep down in here, you can't really start it with your fingers. This is a little trick that I like. This here is a, it's a piece of uh, 5 16 holes, I believe. Might be 3 8 but You just kind of insert the plug like that, and you go straight down in here. And what this does is it allows you to start the plug just like you're putting it in, this, in the small block Ford or a small block Chevy. Um, just like, you know, going right in the side of the head. Uh, this also allows you to keep from stripping the threads on, on these. This is an aluminum head and somewhat easy to you'd be somewhat easily able to cross thread those. So I like doing it like this because it's simple. It's really Really, I mean, that might be the cheapest tool in my toolbox. And it saves a lot of time, too. And you just get it to, as tight as you can get it by hand there. And that will generally just twist right off. You get a hose wheel when it's all the way done. One more. Now uh, I looked up the torque spec on these. It's at nine to eleven foot pounds on things that are that low of a spec. I use one of the old school. Okay, so like I said, 9 foot-pounds to 11 foot-pounds is where we're supposed to be at on these. Now let me actually... So this here is a gauge. This little, as you, as you tighten, this little puppy here moves. And we're gonna, we're gonna be going to the, to the each one of those larger lines is a five. So we're going to be hitting, let's see, the fourth, fourth one in. So that'll be 10 foot pounds right there. That's what I'm, between nine and 11, I'm going to hit 10 and call it. So right there is 10. There's 10. Right. There's 10.
All right, our plugs are in, easy as pie. This one, I've had that for, I'm gonna guess 25 years, and it still works like a champ. It's the old school Craftsman. Back in the day, that's all I bought was Craftsman. But over time, uh, some other brands have kind of struck my fancy. I have, you know, going back to Tecton, my my uh, big torque wrench is a Tecton. Man, is that a nice unit. I really like that thing. Um, it was absolutely wonderful for torquing down head bolts. All right, now we're at Napa. I decided that I'm going to go ahead and replace those uh, boots on the coil-on plugs because they are all swollen and I really don't want to put those back in. So here we are at Napa. All right, Napa took care of me there. I went ahead and the of them in this little kit right here. Uh, they're Belden 702443. Uh, Napa is actually the only place that I've found these at. They might sell them somewhere else online or something like that, but uh, this is it. It comes it comes with the boot and a replacement spring as well. So what what you're doing here, you're these are uh, five dollars and fifty cents a piece. And I don't know how much a coil is, but I'm gonna guess in the fifty to sixty dollar range. My coils are still good. So replacing this saves quite a bit of money. And while I was in there, glanced under the counter, saw a little fox body sitting there. So I went ahead and, as they say on the vice grip garage, I went and snagged on this. That's gonna go right, right on the garage wall. Now we are to the point in the process where we're going to remove these here. I've, I've gone and cleaned this up as good as it's going to get. So you just, I just get a pick, pull these out. I'm actually going to take and uh, spray some uh, brake cleaner in that. All these channels, get them all nice and dried out, cleaned up. In order to get this valve cover all the way clean, I did have to hit the kitchen sink with some Dawn. It, it was really oily from that leak. Hopefully you don't have to do that. Hopefully you can just do it the way I usually do it with the simple green and Dawn mixture. All right. I'll try to find the two uh, 90 degree ends on there and then match you want to match where that little curve goes in this hole the way they did it uh, it only goes in one way so you're not going to get it upside down but you need to go around this thing and be sure it's snug a snug fit it's got these little friction nubs we'll call them to help hold it in there so when you put it back in the car they don't fall out on you there are two of these that are similar However, this one here, right there, kind of protrudes out a little bit. And that 
gasket goes right there. This one here does not have that. And this one here is our one that leaked leaked on us last time. And the last gasket to go in here goes like this. Again, going around the screw. Now that we're ready to put the valve cover back on, we got the gaskets in and everything. I like to go over this one more time, just to be nice and sure. Again, I sprayed the brake cleaner directly on this microfiber towel. This this microfiber towel is a dollar store special. I usually wind up buying these at the dollar store. Or Home Depot. Home Depot's got some pretty good ones too. The, I really like the HDX brand ones. They're a little bigger than these. The only thing about brake cleaners, it dries pretty quick. So give her another, another tube there. Go through here. Sometimes over here, up by the timing, the timing cover. You kind of forget about cleaning that up, but that's an important part too. Be sure that gets cleaned up. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and start putting this thing in here. biggest obstacle every time for me is this hose here and this stuff here. Just kind of gently get it in there. And she'll she'll find home. There's probably a sequence of doing these that I don't know. Let's, let's take them to five, five or six, and then okay. Now that we've taken these all to five. I'm going to go to 8 in the same, or the, close to the same sequence that I just did. These will be kind of, kind of loose. start. We'll get it now though. And eight. I'm going to show you how to do this on one of these. No sense in doing all four on the camera. Just kind of take that out of the package, leave that right there for a minute. And what you're going to do is take this kind of twist and pull. You'll just pop that right out. Um, you can see that thing's saturated. That is dielectric grease. I'm also going to be putting some inside the boot. Once I get 
that out of there. And you just take this and kind of push. You'll feel it pop. Then take take this boot, slide that in there. Just kind of twist right there. You're done. Really easy. Oh, almost forgot. This is my personal favorite um, dielectric grease to use. I think that with all the oil in there, that this probably played a role in this, this thing still working well. And just take her like that and she's in. That just, I mean, it just goes to show you this is really a simple fix, saves you a lot of money. Um, let me grab. Let me grab this. Let's see. Hopefully you can see that well. Five dollars and sixty-nine cents a piece versus buying the whole coil. Um, a lot of times I find that the coil is fine and the boot is the problem. I mean, it's worth a shot. It's worth five bucks to me to give it a shot. Get that thing in the right spot. These here do not require a lot of torque. I just make them snug. I, there's probably a spec for them, but all they're doing is holding this thing in there. If you just make it tight enough that this bolt won't back out on you, you'll be good. I promise. For these, I choke up on the on the ratchet for these. I just go up by the, the head and so that you come clear out here, you're probably gonna Make it a little tighter than it needs to be. You just do it close to the top of the, the head of the ratchet. Perfect. All right, now we can stick this harness back in. That can go back there. Okay. I'm going to do this first before I put the injector, or injector, coil on there. And that just kind of keeps debris from coming down in there. Let it go. Okay, that sits on there. And these. Go like so. Right there. Do not forget to plug this in. Your cam sensor in, or she ain't gonna run, baby. Now we get this throttle cable back over here. Remember, we go right here. And then this back, back unit right here. And again, these are 10 millimeter nuts. Hold these on the stud. If you remember, but that one was not tight when we were pulling this apart. While you're watching me, right now, I mean, what other 
possible time could you possibly yeah for piss sakes I got a 13 while I'm fumbling around with all these tools right now just might be a good time to hit that subscribe button while I'm trying to find my tent All right, which one of you guys took my tin? Why is it always the tin? I don't know which one you... I don't know which one you put my tin over there. That wasn't very funny. Straight. I kind of snag, snagged up on that there for a minute. All right, now these here, when the trance was rebuilt, last I got it back like I said this was wonky these things were all over the place so I'm gonna fix that today I should have fixed it a while ago but I didn't I'm gonna show you how I usually put those back on it works really well because that, that metal is so thin that when you tighten up the nut, it twists with the bolt, or the nut, excuse me, as you're torquing it, it moves with it. So what I do, is I grab an appropriate adjustable wrench or whatever. Probably, probably just go straight, straight on there with the, whatever the hell size that is. One, one good thing to do is put the nut on there first. If you put the nut on, it's going to save you a little time. Like I say, hold that with the with the crescent wrench while you're tightening that nut down, and that thing will stay somewhat straight for you. Again, this I don't know if I mentioned it before. This is the hose that goes into the degas bottle. You don't really want to get that pinched. Huge fan of whatever this insulation is. Forward foot on there. I guess technically some of this could be Mazda design. Okay. Originally, I'm sure that was in kind of a different spot. There we go. Now, you can't forget to put this on. And I... We got to put this thing on the right way. I usually like to remove this all the way because this, this is hard plastic. And... I've broken these before and you gotta go clear the junkyard that doesn't look right
Fire she blows. All right. I think that's everything. Giving her a glance over here, make sure everything's. I do need to poke these on the port. There's another one right here. Another one right here. Those are there to kind of hold wires up from wire harnesses and everything from getting burnt. That's also what this is doing is right down here we have our in, our uh, exhaust manifold and these little tabs normally you know most most guys could probably just say ah, I don't need those but I really don't need that falling down there and causing a leak you know I think we're done I'm gonna be honest with you I think we're done all right, it is the day after I did all that work on the escape and I was uh, putting the video together and I realized I did not do an ending for the video. I just stopped and so I'm going to go ahead and do an ending right now. All right, there it is running. Fresh oil change, uh, nice and clean now. All I did was uh, spray the simple green on it and then spray it off of water. If you remember, it was quite dirty before. There's still a little bit of dust in there, but for the most part, it's pretty clean. I just wanted to, to end this video correctly and show you the end result. Thank you for following along. I appreciate it. Um, I wish you guys wouldn't hide my 10 millimeter socket next time though. That was that was pretty bothersome. I also just may have a bit of good news. Made an offer on a car today. Um, that I plan on I plan on getting a car uh, just to do on this on this channel. The whole the whole purpose of that car is to get it to do on the channel. Actually, let me back up. It is my wife's idea. You can thank her for it. Um, she's doing it. Uh, she saved up a little bit of money so I can get this car and uh, use it to get the, the channel going. And hopefully uh, you guys come along for the ride. Give me uh, recommendations, tips, pointers. Um, it's going to be a low budget build though. So hopefully we see that car soon. And I hope you guys all have a, had a wonderful time following along. It was kind of a long video. I'm going to try to keep them a little bit shorter. Towards the end, I started editing quite a bit out. Uh, hopefully, it all meshes together well. And once again, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell, please. And have a wonderful evening or day, whatever it is. Ta-ta.